Hey watch fam, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about why many watch companies are seemingly launching more black dial plane watches. This includes brands like Tudor, Omega and some other brands as well which are seemingly launching many of these black dial watches in 2024. So before I continue with the video, if you like this type of content, do remember to like and subscribe. If you want to support the channel, do visit 2secondswatch.com. We have leather watch straps for sale, we have NATO straps, and we also have pre-owned watches for sale. Most of the watches that we feature on the channel are for sale on our website. And of course, if you're looking to purchase something as a thanks for supporting our YouTube channel, you can find the coupon code for some discount on the watches and the watch straps as well. So to understand black dial watches and you know why brands are coming up with them in 2024, you have to understand that watches take about one to two years to conceptualize and design. So it's a kind of slow industry. It's not as fast as many people think they are. They are traditionally more traditional companies. So in other words, the watch brands are actually a little slower to react. And of course, you know, you, you're looking at the black dial watches coming out now because a lot of the brands are actually suffering from all the price increases over the last three years. If you have been following watches or getting into watches, you will realize that it is quite expensive, especially, especially if you're buying a Swiss luxury watch. The prices have gone up 5 to 10% some even 20%. And the reality is watches will become more expensive as watchmakers are leaving the industry. Uh, because of COVID-19, there was a major shift in the industry. Of course, watchmakers have always been in a shortage kind of thing where it takes you know three to five years to train watchmakers. So it takes time to train watchmakers and therefore you know the prices are increasing, brands are trying to move up market, and the reason they're moving up market is because, you know, they're trying to increase their profit margin, which uh, I have another video, which I will talk about that, which will be released later. Make sure you stay subscribed and you can check out the video on my breakdown on the truth revealed, why watch brands are increasing prices and what is the impact in my opinion as well. So there's a report that, you know, 4,000 new watchmakers are needed by 2026 just to replace the aging and retiring watchmakers average age of watchmakers is actually the retirement retiring age. So they, they're not able to replace a lot of these watchmakers and brands sort of know that it's not, I mean, with today's marketplace and the new generation coming into the workforce, we don't see many going into the craft of watchmaking. It's not a very glamorous job. It's not one that a lot of people want to do because you know, you've got to train a couple of years and also, you know, you'll be mostly staring through and looking at small components, assembling them and doing things like that. So there is a shortage, you know, just to, re just, just to replace the aging and retiring workforce. And of course, you factor in COVID-19, you know, it, it made a big hit in the watch industry as well. And that's why you saw the massive increase of prices um, to, of course, even um, Rolex, you know, a lot of brands, Pateks, and, you know, basically every watch in the industry saw a massive surge during the pandemic and the aftermath of the pandemic around 2020, 2021. Of course, today we see it all dropping. I have another video if you want to find out how Tudor and Rolex are affected and you know why their prices are dropping. Remember to click up there and the link is in the description below as well where I deep dive into why these two brands are suffering because of the correction. One of the reasons why Tudor has a new factory that is automated and mostly robotic in 2023, I think, is to make production more efficient. And Rolex themselves are investing in more factories in 2025. It's not just to meet the demand. I think a big brand like Rolex, they're really looking forward. They do know that the demand for Rolex is high. They want to feel the demand. But at the same time, it's a big balance to make sure that there are enough watches as well. And they're not manufacturing too many of them. So it's not just to meet the demand. It's also because they want to make into you know an automated process because watchmaking is dying, it's a dying art, you know, it's a dying kind of craft. Eventually, I believe that as the years go by, the average price of watches will continue to move up. And that's where we're talking about brand new watches here. 
And that's why I find that, you know, pre-owned watches are one of the best ways to get into watches you know, in, in the hobby as well, because there's still a lot of good watches, uh, especially watches that are, you know, EDA based or cylinder based movements, which are easy to service compared to buying a new watch. You know, it's going to become more of an art and less of a tool. You don't see coming more of tool watches anymore. Technically, most of the watches today are not tool watches. I mean, the design like tool watches to mimic tool, tool watches. But the reality is in today's generation, at least if you're watching this and it's 2024, people are not buying watches to tell time. They do use it to tell time, but the purpose of buying is not really to tell time. I mean, I've heard a saying that even in, the, in Korea, Rolex watches are the default watches that parents give to the children when they get married. And that's how they do it, you know. So different cultures have different things, but this is just an example of what it becomes. So it's no longer a tool watch. And it's not that watchmakers and the watch brands are not innovating. Sometimes when we see these black dial watches, we have to remember the average consumer that's going in to buy these luxury watches. They know that it sells. It's actually targeted to a lot of first-time watch buyers. You know, they're trying to target the young market, for example, people coming to buy their first luxury watch. That is what the Submariner in Rolex does, you know. Of course, it is very desirable and in the sense that they always say that you can't get the Submariner. But the purpose is to draw the people in to want the Submariner. Of course, they end up buying other Rolex pieces before they can get to the Submariner. But that's what the Tudor Black Bay 41 in black is doing. The reality is it's targeting consumers and people who are buying their first luxury watch. And they will go for a alternative and, of course, Today, you know, one of the best alternatives to a Rolex Submariner in black would be a Tudor Black Bay 41 black in the monochromatic color. It is a modern design. It is more available than the Rolex Sub. And of course, it is also probably even the more trendy of the brand where Rolex always has a more of um, older kind of status symbol where Tudor is probably the more fun company, you know, as you can see it in their advertising as well. So you see that with Omega as well. Omega has launched in the Equatorial Black in three different sizes. This is perfect. In fact, I really like the new Omega Equatorial in black. They've changed it a bit. They've made it a little more plain, even in the dial texture. And I understand why they do it for the black version. I'm not sure about the other colors, but I understand why. Because the Equatorial is one of Omega's best-selling lines. It, it is modern, it's sporty, you know, it has what it has of looks. And I wouldn't be surprised that it is one of the best sellers. In, in fact, it could be as popular selling as the Omega Seamaster Bond or the Seamaster 300, sorry, not the Seamaster Bond, the Seamaster 300 series, the, the one with the skeleton hands. And it, this is probably the, the go-to, you know. Of course, people are attracted, they want to buy that, but a lot of people, I wouldn't be surprised that they buy the Equaterra. And the Equaterra is actually trading very well in the pre-owned market as well. They're holding the prices very, very well. Of course, you can get them at a, at a good price in the pre-owned market if you search hard enough. You can tell that it is one of the best-selling watches. So why is it launching in black as well? For the same reason why Tudor is launching the black watch as well. And you see it being repeated lately in the latest photo of Daniel Craig, who is ambassador for Omega, and everyone's talking about the watch well, right now, you see him wearing a black dial without a date, Seamaster, which looks very similar to the 60th anniversary edition, James Bond edition, which, you know, which is in the blue dial, but this one is in black. So it's like, you know, black is the new color. It's because people will buy these watches. You also think of Omega's Speedmaster. It's in black as well. The most classic of classic Omega Speedmasters, those are in black as well. Black dials, plain black dials. And it is, of course, their best seller, one of the best sellers of all time, you know, since it was launched. You think of this as the defensive move by these watch brands. I look at it, it's a de defensive move by the watch brands. Remember how I was talking about how the watch market takes time to move and is a little slower? Brands are launching black dial watches because they're starting to see the dip in brand new watches. So when you see the black dial watches coming this year, they're actually conceptualized two years ago when the watch brands started to see, hey, look, look, we've raised some prices in 2021, 2022, you know, because the demand went crazy because of COVID. And, you know, when things returned to normal, they started to see a dip and they realized that, hey, look, we need some black dial watches. We need to play defensive. I believe probably in 2022, 2023, 
that's where they start conceptualizing and getting this out into the market. So that's why you see it coming out in 2024. You're actually seeing something that the watch brands are already predicting a year or two ago. So that's why Tudor launched the Backlay 41 and you see more black, black watches because the mid-range market, um, pretty much Tudor is targeting the mid-range market. You can tell from the pricing, about three to $4,000. Since people want to sub, but they can't get it. So the ADs can sell the Black Bay 41s because most of the ADs who are Tudor ADs are usually also Rolex ADs and vice versa. So they, people come and they want to buy a Rolex sub, they can't get a Rolex sub. You know, ADs come back and say, hey, look, we also have the Black Bay 41. You know, it has very much the same ethos. It has the same uh, history. It's part of the same brand. You can consider that as well. And, you know, that's why, in a way, Tudor has also launched their new bracelet. I mean, you can not call it a Jubilee. Tudor doesn't call it a Jubilee. But if you have one look at it, it's almost like, what, 90% identical to the Jubilee bracelet, Royce Jubilee. So yeah, there you go. They even have a different class adjustment now in Tudor, the new watches, especially Black Bay 41 has the new class, you know, like the glide lock of the Rolex. So yeah, it's very attractive. And I can see how ADs will sell these watches as well. So yeah, as brand sales for the new watches will only get worse, I think that brands will take a little less risk and a little less innovation from the brands as they struggle to navigate a market. We can see there's a lot of fallout from companies who've been raising, raising prices. And, you know, it has given a gap because a lot of Swiss luxury brands are moving, trying to move up market. I mean, JLC is, is one of them that's, you know, has raised a reversal by a ridiculous amount. I think it's over double the price, you know, that's just, that's just crazy. You know, they're trying to move up market, but, you know, obviously they failed. You can see that JLC is not doing very well in 2023, 2024 as well. They're trying to go into a market that they can't be in. You know, of course, luxury brands, these watches, when they raise the prices, it's very rare that they're going to bring it down. Likelihood, they're going to maintain the prices. And that's how this is what we call a defensive move. So as watches, you know, the costs are going up, manufacturing costs are going up, less and less watchmakers are coming to the industry. They can't replace them fast enough. Sales are going down, you know, even resale values are going down. I mean, I have... Another video talking about Rolex prices going down, Tudor going down. Some people are saying, hey, look, the watch prices do go down, okay, resale values. But that's traditionally not really true for a lot of Rolex watches and Tudor watches since 2020. They tend to retain the value pretty well. Contrary to what people think, brands do really care about the secondary retail price because secondary retail price gives an indication to the brand how desirable their watches are. If the price, the secondary retail price is so low, that means that it's going to affect people buying new watches. The desirability is there. So it's, it's a very important take. You have to understand, you know, even Cartier is one of the companies that I think, I think before 2019, they actually destroyed millions or billions of dollars of watches, extra watches, because they don't want the extra watches to go into the market. You know, they, they recycle them as well. Because if there are too many of those watches in the market, it affects the price. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. It's more of my opinion. If you agree or disagree with my opinion, please, as usual, I'll be happy to engage with you in the comments. Thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, if you want to support the channel, do remember to check out 2secondswatch.com. We have watch straps for sale. We have pre-owned watches for sale. We do not do consignment watches. And the watches that we have are actually watches in stock. Just ask us anything. And of course, always like and subscribe our video. Do remember to share this with someone who is probably going to watch us or want to understand a bit more about this. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. And let me know in the comments as well what you enjoyed and what you did not enjoy. I'll be happy to engage with you. Thank you very much and you have a great day and have a great week.